In this box is a Chromebook that we have been wildly anticipating since January earlier in 2021. It was unveiled at CES and when it showed up and we started seeing what it would look like, how fast it could possibly be, and all the premium build materials that go into it, we just got really, really excited and then it kind of disappeared and showed back up and disappeared and showed back up and it's finally here. It's finally up for pre-order. We have one here in the office. I haven't even opened this thing yet. I can't wait to see. This is the Asus Chromebook CX-9. Let's jump in the box. All right, so let's just get down to it and hop in the box here. This is a, an abnormally large Chromebook box. I'm assuming there's something going on inside here. Yep. So right off the bat, uh, we have a unique box. It's got some fingerprints and stuff on it because this is a review unit. But uh, yeah, we got this cool looking Navy box here, soft touch. And again, I, I, I take flack for geeking out about boxes, um, but all it tells me is that the manufacturer considered this device a little more than normal. Normally we, we get boxes that look just like this, recycled materials and, and, and brown boxes. And I'm, and I'm fine with that. Like I really am at the end of the day, if, if the box, you know, recycles better and it's better for the environment, that's, that's awesome. But you can make recyclable stuff look kind of cool. Uh, and when the box and the packaging is considered, usually that means the product inside is considered as well. And so, um, I think that's a really cool thing. And honestly, like this is one of the cooler boxes I've seen other than I think this is better than Samsung's boxes. This is this looks and feels kind of like a, a Google made box, which is really cool. This I don't know what this is, but we're going to open it and see what's see what's in it. Uh, so that's the big box out of the way. Um, we'll, we'll come back to this thing. I did not just notice it's like a diagram on here. I don't know if you can catch that on camera or not, but it's like a diagram of making that into a laptop stand, but there's something in here. So I'm guessing the box doubles as some sort of laptop stand or something. I don't know. Um, weird play there, but you probably don't really care what's in there. We care what's in here. And again, you know, this device uh, checks a bunch of boxes for people that just want a Chromebook that is just flat out amazing at everything. So 400 nit screen, you know, core i7 11th gen processor with Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, with uh, uh, Intel Xe graphics, half a terabyte of NVMe storage, 16 gigs of RAM. This thing is just maxed out Chromebook. And honestly, at $1,150, uh, for what is on the spec sheet, it's actually pretty reasonably priced, I think, because this isn't uh, you know trying to be some sort of affordable Chromebook. This is trying to be high-end, corporate feeling, just a, a really, really well-designed Chromebook and a well-thought-out Chromebook. And even the lid here uh, doesn't just pop up. It, it actually hinges open, which <laughs> that's a nice touch. And you can probably catch that here. I'm noticing this. So as you lift it, you see the Chromebook kind of just like lift itself out of the box for you. Nice touches. Again, considered. Uh, and and that's, that's kind of an interesting thing uh, when you start talking about uh, boxing and, and packaging. And now that I'm looking at this, um, it doesn't, let's see. Yeah, there's no battery or no uh, charging block in here. So I'm, this is probably the charging block. So that is a, an odd little bit of boxing there. Uh, usually you would just make this box big enough and the charging brick would be in here somewhere. But we'll, again, we'll open that up here in just a second. Uh, general paperwork stuff in there. But again, that's, that's just a fun little thing. You know, it lifts up. Cause that's kind of this one, if you've seen the images of this particular Chromebook, the, the hinge on it really, like we've had some Chromebooks do the ergo lift kind of thing. And you know, the keyboard comes up a little bit when you hit the hinge, this thing comes up a bunch. And so, uh, so yeah, here it is. And it's uh, just over two pound, super thin glory. Uh, so let's see if we can just slide it out of here. Not gonna happen. All right, get that out of here. So I'm sure this thing, man, that that's really light. Uh, this reminds me of a Chromebook that Acer had at CE, or not a Chromebook, it was a laptop uh, PC uh, that, that Acer had at CES like two or three years ago. I remember it was so crazy thin, like picking it up, it almost felt abnormal uh, how light it was. This is approaching that. Uh, nice and thin, uh, not crazy thin, like it's not a razor blade or anything like that, but 
uh, really beautiful um, navy color. And I, I think this one is some composite material, so it's not all straight up aluminum. Uh, they wouldn't be able to get the weight down quite this low if it was all aluminum, but it's going to be some alloys and that kind of stuff uh, going on here. I'm going to I'm going to open this and hopefully Joe can grab that there as we lift it. And you see that hinge hits right there and really lifts up the chassis. And whew, that screen is bright. So 400 nits is what uh, Asus uh, has this listed as. And I can tell you as soon as it, it came up and it is super bright, that is definitely the case. Um, and the, the cool trick that this thing does is when, when you open this thing up and that hinge kind of slides up underneath the keyboard, hey, it lifts the keyboard up so it gives you a little bit of an ergonomic typing experience, but it also hides the bottom bezel. You know, the bezel, you, it's almost impossible to see um, from most uh, vantage points. It's not huge, but you know, there's a, a little half inch bezel down there. Well, it gets hidden behind the keyboard. So when you look at this thing straight on, it really looks like there's almost no bezel on the bottom. It's got these tiny bezels around the top. It's, it's attractive. I mean, this thing is a really, really good looking device. Um, and let me look around this thing just a little bit more. Obviously backlit keys and they're dark keys. Um, so as we've seen in, in Asus's prior Chromebooks, um, sometimes they have these like light gray keys and the, the light bleed can, can make it a little interesting to see in different lighting conditions, the symbols on the keys. Not the case here. We've got really nice dark keys uh, with very little light bleed. Uh, around the edges and I'm gonna crank that all the way up on the keys. Yeah, it's just gonna in the in the evening Or if you're in a low lit scenario, that's just gonna have a nice glow to it. The keyboard feels incredible uh, The entire deck of this thing feels very sturdy pick this thing up. Oh My gosh. Yeah, and this is like pixel book level sturdiness um, uh, Pixelbook, Pixelbook Go, uh, these things, you pick them up, they're very, very light, very thin, but I mean, I can hold that thing right by the corner and there's just no bend going on here. I mean, no flex in that chassis at all. Uh, and that's just a cool feeling thing when you can pick something up that's so light and so just like breezy feeling, but it's also substantial. There's something really cool about that. So. You've got to consider you're getting half a terabyte of NVMe, 16 gigs of RAM, a Core i7, 11th gen Intel processor here, a 400 nit display. I'm going to make sure this one is touch. Yes, this is a touch display. There are some models that won't have touch. You're getting a big, huge, perfectly clicky glass trackpad here. I don't know if this will, probably not until we're, we're logged in and going here. There, a number pad will show up down here. I'm gonna work on that. I'm gonna have to get logged in and stuff here in a minute. Uh, we got a fingerprint reader. Uh, I think the only notable exception here to the overall Chromebook experience, well, two of them actually, this is not a convertible, so you can't flip this thing around. It opens up, man, that opens up really wide. Holy crap, that's that's way wider than, than I would have expected. Um, so it opens wide open. Uh, but there's no pen support here. So it's not going to convert into a tablet-y kind of experience. And it's also not going to accept USI stylus support from what we can tell, um, obviously during the review process and stuff. We'll, we'll check. I mean, who knows? We could get surprised. But what you're getting here is this clamshell, uh, like peak Chromebook experience here. Just looking at this thing already, I can tell you, man, this, this is going to be an absolute joy uh, to use. And, and just watching it just kind of stand itself up when you open it. Uh, wow, I, I'm, I'm already impressed with this thing. So let me cut away real quick, get logged in, and we'll run a couple other quick tests on it. All right, so we are up and logged in, and just as I suspected during the login process, the keyboard and trackpad are fantastic. I mean, part of it sometimes is the key keyboard's frame itself, like what, what they put under the keys. That's, that is part of it, but part of it too is the rigidity of the frame around it, and this thing is just so rigid. Uh, it just helps make the keyboard feel that more that much more substantial. And another thing I noticed too, as I was going about uh, getting things set up, it, I guess it's the way the hinge sits uh, on the table. The the screen just feels like it pushes back against my hand when I push on the screen. Like it's not kind of wobbling around. It feels very 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 rigid and firm. And that just I feel like I keep coming back to those words with this thing because there is nothing about this that feels. Uh, unconsidered or an afterthought like the entire feel of this thing just feels so well done already and again we have to review these things just like we review anything else but my initial impressions of this thing are already just absolutely through the roof I'm I'm kind of blown away by how good this is we've got the screen cranked up to I don't know somewhere around I'm gonna go up and down one eh, about 60 percent or so like that and this is even under our studio lights completely workable like this is comfortable 
it cranks up to 400, every bit of those 400 nits that Asus says it does. Uh, and I realized kind of in my excitement about just everything going on here, we didn't even talk about ports and stuff. So we'll get back to that in just a second. With this has got a couple things on the chassis right here that are interesting. One is the fingerprint reader. We've seen these a hundred times. It's set up just like any other fingerprint scanner, uh, nice and simple, and they're quick and they work. So if I lock, I can just touch, doop, and we're logged back in. I love that. I wish that every $600 plus Chromebook had a fingerprint scanner. Uh, one thing I advocate that I think every Chromebook, every laptop should have is just the privacy shade up here. Uh, this one's a nice, easy one to slide. It's not all sticky and hard. Like a lot of times you get to dig in there with them. Uh, not the case here. It just opens and closes really quickly. So it's nice to know. I can see that dot up there and know that my camera is in fact turned off. And the trackpad feels great, has a great click. Uh, again, going through the setup process, it's like, yep, this is, this is a good trackpad. Again, aided by the rigidity of the chassis. But then it's got this really cool trick of its sleeve. And there's a little icon up here. If you just hold there for a second, boom, you get a number pad. Um, and uh, let's do, I'll do this so I don't completely blow the shot out. So you can see my text there, 7784561234. Boom. And the minute I go to click, I can still click my mouse with that up there. So I can tap for numbers and click through for my normal mouse activities. And when I'm done with that, just hold on that thing again and it goes away. That's just really, really cool. So as I said, uh, I didn't get a chance to walk around the ports because everything about this Chromebook right now has, has got me really, really excited. Uh, but on the side, we've got two USB Type-C ports. Uh, these are Thunderbolt ports as well, Thunderbolt 4, uh, HDMI port, uh, which is, uh, Again, on a device this thin, that's really cool to see uh, the inclusion of that. Because again, you don't think there's going to be a lot of enterprise people using this, uh, corporate individuals who are going to go give a you know lead a meeting or something. Sometimes it's just easier to plug in the HDMI port and move on and not have to deal with a dongle. So that's that's a welcome addition. Micro US or micro SD card slot, headphone microphone. Uh, one full size uh, USB type A, which is always beneficial. And one of the Chromebooks I think really needs a Kensington lock port. So uh, this thing's out and about somewhere. Yeah, you better lock it down. Somebody's gonna walk off with this thing because it is uh, absolutely phenomenal. One other thing that uh, during the, the setup process while I was kind of getting logged in, I was like, hey, well, might as well. There's a USI pin right back there on the shelf. Might as well grab it and check to make sure it works. Um, happy to report that in fact, it does uh, work. Well, it did. There it goes. Um, so yeah, USI pen support uh, totally works. I, I could see why ASUS maybe wouldn't have put it in there. We couldn't find any marketing material that said it actually had it in there, but um, I could see them not putting it in because, you know, writing on a upright screen is kind of weird. But the fact that this thing lays flat, if you needed to take some notes, this wouldn't be the best thing to do it on, I wouldn't think. Uh, but in a pinch, you could lay this thing down and write some notes down if you needed to. Uh, or if you just like to annotate a PDF or something like that, uh, you know, a USI stylus is going to work. Obviously, Asus and all kinds of other people make USI pens at this point. So uh, you can grab one of those and use it to your heart's delight, at least with the upper end model of this that has the touchscreen on it. Again, lower ends don't have the touchscreen. So uh, with those, you're not, obviously not going to be able to use a USI stylus on them. One other thing I want to point out is this is a fanned version uh, of the uh, 11th gen Intel processors. So Asus did release uh, another kind of high-end uh, flippable Chromebook, the, the Flip CX5400, and it's got these non-fanned Tiger Lake processors. We're in, the, we're in the process actually of going through a review with that device too. So we'll have to see how the uh, the lack of fan affects or doesn't affect uh, those particular versions of the Tiger Lake chip. But this device is fan. There's a relatively small fan port here on the bottom. That's, that's not huge. Um, and I'm trying to see if they've hidden. Yep, there's some fan ports hidden in that hinge, but the way that it, the ergonomics of the way this thing works, you'll, you'll never encounter those uh, whatsoever. But man, I'm impressed uh, with this thing 100%. But before we get out of here, Let's see if there's anything else fun in this box. Watch, you know what's probably gonna happen? I'm probably gonna open this up and there's gonna be like a USI pen in here. And I'm gonna feel like an, an idiot for uh, saying that it wasn't uh, pen enabled earlier. Uh, let's see. Professional unboxer here. Uh, where's the crease? Well, this is very interesting. or not so great at actually getting the thing out. So it's a laptop stand for sure, but I'm trying to open this stink of there it comes. Well, yeah, no surprises here. Wait, let's see if this opens. Oh, 
I was really hoping there was going to be a pen in there. Uh, no pen. Uh, ooh, but I like this. Uh, and let me explain why. So this is normally uh, the USB-C chargers you get with Asus's devices. It looks like this, except there's a, you know a, a plug here that you plug into the wall or right here. Uh, this is a two-piece, so you would plug this in. The only thing I would like to see in this is it actually have a, a wall wart where you could actually plug it in the wall from here if you wanted, or you could extend it. Um, this is extension only. So I know that doesn't seem as nice uh, or, as, or as easy to use all the time, but these things are hard when you try to plug them into uh, power strips. So it's nice to have just a single um, um, plug at the end. It fits into a lot more places. So. Um, you know, you can buy yourself a different one if you want something a little smaller uh, to tote around with you. Asus sells them, obviously. Um, but yeah, this box just has the uh, just has the charger in it. But according to the uh, where they went out oh, here, yeah, according to this, you're supposed to put your Chromebook on this. I suppose. Not great. Um, yeah, this could have just been a box, but you know, whatever. Have fun with your packaging. Uh, it's kind of cool that they do uh, little stuff like that. But ultimately, under all this boxing, under all this packaging, under all this stuff, lies what probably is one of the best Chromebooks I've ever laid my hands on. Uh, and I hate that it took so long to get here, but you know, COVID and all that kind of stuff uh, may have slowed things down. But now that it is here, this is going to be a tough Chromebook to beat. And I'm adding this in with every Pixel book and every Google made thing and every nice Chromebook we've ever laid hands on. This thing is pretty amazing, but we got to review it. We got to put it through its paces and that's just part of what we do around here. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Make sure while you're down there doing that, you give us a thumbs up too if you like this video and make sure you ring the notification bell as well. If you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos like this and when we review this particular Chromebook. Till next time, we'll see you.